Dr. John Kovaris, our guest, he's a reproductive endocrinologist and he uh, is at the high end of fertility issues. Uh, what's the difference between egg freezing and embryo freezing? There are two different stages of gamete freezing. The egg comes right out just like the sperm. Right. They have potential, but they are not what we would consider living like an embryo would be. An embryo is post-fertilization by one day or two days, all the way to five or six days out. Okay. Now, if you know our industry, we have been freezing embryos probably for almost 20 years. Mm. And back then when we started, it was considered experimental because we weren't doing a really good job of keeping the embryos going, nor could we freeze-thaw them as well. Right. But we worked out the kinks. Now, we have been able to freeze male sperm easily for almost 80 years. But the egg has always stymied us. The egg resists all of the freeze-thaw techniques that we were coming up with. Right. But for the last eight or nine years, we've gotten pretty good. Now, just to give you an idea, one out of 500 eggs became an embryo almost eight years ago. One out of 500 right. eight years ago. Right. Now, one out of five. Really? Because of the freezing technique? Freezing because techniques. it's just better. Right. And mm -hmm. it's just not the technique. They've gotten the technique down where they commercially sell the kits, but it's kind of like a recipe. Either you know this recipe perfectly, right. and you hold your mouth a certain way when you mm -hmm. stir, mm -hmm. and you know that there's a certain amount of time between when you put it from one tank to the next tank. That one and a half seconds could be all the difference in the world. I see. So the so technicians have to really know what they're doing. The technicians have to know, have mm -hmm. experience. And so that's where we've gone. We, just because everybody says we can freeze eggs, what they haven't actually said is, yeah, we've frozen them, but we've really never actually thawed any of them to see if we're doing it right. Okay. And when you thaw an egg uh, right. for implantation, do you do a genetic testing, for instance, example, uh, say somebody has Huntington's disease in the family and it, and it travels down. Can you test an egg, maybe not specifically for Huntington's, but a hereditary d disease in all ports, something. So you can say this egg carries it, so we won't implant it. Can you do that? The, do you do that? Well, well, we can test the donor if that was the concern. Right. The first thought would be the first, easiest mm -hmm. would be the donor. Before implantation. Bef before even taking the egg out of the donor. Oh. Makes sense? So it's an mm -hmm. egg donor or the intended parent mother. Right. We could always test her and she would say, well, I carry it. So then we would have to go forward and make the eggs. And yes, mm -hmm. it is possible to make eggs, but it's easier to go ahead and make the embryo, let the embryo grow to the fifth day, then with the laser, you would shoot a little tiny hole with a small tiny laser through the eggshell, and you would tease out a few cells, and you would take just those few cells. That way you're not disturbing the embryo too much. Okay. And you send those cells off for genetic analysis. Okay. And the implantation process, uh, how many eggs, how many embryos, how, how does it work? Implantation. If you take somebody at day one, you would you a day one embryo is the equivalent, actually, one, one day five embryo is the equivalent of three or four day one embryos. Okay, so, so as it matures, we, it's as, stronger. Absolutely. It's like looking at a, um, a marathon. Mm -hmm. And you have 40,000 people start the Boston Marathon, and you have, I don't know, 20, right. 10,000 people, and, and they end after 12, 15 sure. hours. But there's a group that have finished in the right time. Okay. And so what has changed supers. in the fertility world since you began this? You said definitely freezing uh, better, uh, success better. Success better, freezing better. Side effects better, not. Um, there's a whole bunch of stuff that's changed, but let's just keep focusing on what's happening with technique. Mm -hmm. Technique, it's kind of like cooking, like I was using the analogy of cooking. You have the recipe, you do it, you bake something, but no one's actually ever tasted what you've ever eaten. So you don't really know did I cook it correctly or incorrectly? Is it too salty, too sweet? Did I forget an ingredient? Right. Did I leave it too long? Mm -hmm. So the tricks that we have, we've been doing egg donation and we've been shipping eggs probably to, to four countries now. I know Canada's one of them. I know that we shipped to England and we shipped to Australia. You're shipping eggs? We ship eggs. Why? Because there's been a, a, a block in, in couples receiving, having the ability to get a donor egg. Okay, so these are people who need donor eggs, right. not they their need, own. It didn't make right. sense. Okay, got you. Right. And so you're infertile. You're infertile. You can't use your own eggs for some reason, and so you need a donor egg. And unless you were to, say, have a compassionate donor like a sister who was right. receiving no compensation, the law mm -hmm. here states you can't receive compensation or broker for compensation. Right. But you can still take someone from, our, from outside of the country 
we can arrange for this, we can get a donor, and we can then have the eggs shipped to you. Better yet, what I prefer is I'd prefer to take those donor eggs, have people ship me the sperm, right? make the embryo, grow it to day five, freeze it and ship it back up to your local infertility okay, and center. Okay, do you have any idea who the donor is? I, I do. I know you do, but, but does I the, say does the I'm, the, I'm the couple. The intended and parents? No. The intended if, parents, no. They, they can if they wanted to know the donor, but most of the time it's anonymous, and so they mm -hmm. don't know it. They just know I saw a picture, and this is who this person is, and we chose them. Right, but you as a doctor know the health profile, Absolutely. and you know... Uh, genetic analysis genetic has been analysis. done, psych evaluation, I mean, everything that is required by any health authority, because Australia's requirements are completely different than Canada's. How so? Uh, it's, I don't have Again, enough time. Don't have enough time. <laughs> I wish. We'll, we'll talk but later. Different. And, They're different. And Canada's regulations are different from the states or not? Uh, they're similar, a little mm -hmm. more stringent. Okay. Now, if somebody is going through some kind of treatment, a chemotherapy, a radiation, right. and they're worried right. uh, about uh, fertility, a good reason to freeze your eggs? Correct. Let, let's put it in perspective. Fertility preservation started for cancer patients, specifically. Right. If you're going to get chemotherapy, you, you mm -hmm. expect no eggs after mm -hmm. that. But if you had a husband, it was always better to make the embryo because they stored better. Now, if you're a professional woman and you have a career and you're delaying childbearing and you know I'm going to go past 35 to 40, but I want to preserve that option, mm -hmm. obviously egg freezing is good for you. Unless you're married, then you make egg freezing plus embryos and you okay. store. But what happens if you're a couple who's had children? But you're thinking, we want to see, maybe after 10 years of raising these kids, we think we might, might want one more. Right. If we stored eggs now, we can keep those, that option open. Really? And what about the women who have come around and never met Mr. Right? I mean, not Mr. Right now, but Mr. Right. Yes, we've had some right nows. <laughs> Everybody's had. <laughs> of course. Okay? Yes. And, and, they, and people will say, well, I'm never going to find him, so I will use mm -hmm. uh, donor semen, man in the can, as we in the industry right. call it. But okay, so as a single woman, I'd single like woman, to have, you a, have a child. But one of them is storing your egg. Okay. And store it early, under 34. So if you find Mr. Wright at 50, right? Uh, how long, or is there an age limit on no. when you will implant? Not, so if, if a 60-year-old woman... If a 60-year-old woman came to us and was healthy, and see, I have a lot of 60-year-old women who are mothers who carry for my patients. They really? are compassionate like surrogates. surrogates. They're surrogates. Compassionate surrogates. Compassionate surrogates. And I love that group. But that group's the greatest group because they're still healthy. They mm -hmm. just don't have the reproductive potential. But they carry a uterus, and I can make that uterus behave exactly okay, as Okay, so you to. don't have to be able to be reproductive to carry the baby no. is the point. But no. You have to be healthy. You have to be healthy. And I guess compassionate. I can't imagine. Well, you know what? A placenta it, but makes many you can. younger. Did you know that? Uh, no, maybe that's a reason. Yeah. <laughs> so, but I'm thinking if you have the baby at 60, which you could. You could. And then you'd be 80 and they, and we're supposed to live to 104 now if we make it to 50, someone said the other day, without a life-threatening you, disease, you, you are you're bringing going to up go an to issue. 104 or something I, I like agree. that. I agree. I will be 104 and I expect mm -hmm. you to be 104 too. I would hope so. Too. And we'll be crocking around and uh, probably still working. And handing those depending. kids, handing those kids all their money. Mm -hmm. How nice to see you My again. My pleasure. Thank you, uh, Dr. John Kuvaras, and it's his wedding anniversary today. <laughs> Yesterday. 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 Congrats. Our first year. Uh huh. So Ms. Wright came along. Absolutely. Okay. Any children coming along? Unfortunately, not. No. Okay.